This happened a couple of Christmases ago, while I was visiting my sister and her family in this quiet little town upstate. They'd moved there a few years back, and the place had this postcard kind of charm, you know? Snow-covered rooftops, kids making snowmen in their yards, little lights strung along the houses. It was the kind of place that almost felt too perfect, like one of those Christmas villages you'd see in department stores. It was Christmas Eve, late afternoon, and I'd just stepped outside to get some fresh air. The snow had piled up pretty thick, and it was that soft kind of snow that crunches under your boots. Everything was covered in a soft, blue-gray light, with the sun just starting to dip below the trees. There were kids all bundled up, building snow forts, and you could smell the fireplaces going from a few houses down. It felt peaceful, almost sleepy. I was strolling around the block, taking in the scene, when I noticed this man a few houses down. He was standing in someone's front yard by himself, and he was making a snowman. Nothing unusual about that, except the snowman looked a little off. He was hunched over, really focused on it, and he was just pouring all this red liquid all over the snow. I stopped for a second, squinting, thinking maybe he'd just gotten creative with some colored water or something. But as I got closer, it looked almost like blood. The color was too dark, too thick, and it just didn't sit right with me. The man was probably in his mid-fifties, with gray hair poking out from under a knit cap. His coat was this worn, brownish color, and he had a kind of scruffy look to him, like he hadn't shaved or showered in days. He was grinning, and his breath came out in these big clouds, but he kept his eyes fixed on the snowman, adding details like he was creating some kind of twisted masterpiece. He was carving out what looked like a mouth and adding sharp little stones for teeth, his hands moving way too carefully for something so strange. I stood there for a second, just watching, trying to make sense of it. Part of me thought maybe it was some weird Christmas prank. But then, as he added more red around the snowman's mouth, shaping it into a wide, toothy grin, something about it felt wrong, really wrong. There were a couple of kids nearby, probably around seven or eight, staring at him with wide eyes. I glanced over at them, and I could tell they were freaked out too. The man hadn't noticed me yet, so I took a couple of steps closer and called out to him. Hey man, maybe ease up on that. There are kids around. My voice came out a bit shaky, but I tried to sound casual, like maybe he'd snap out of whatever weird mood he was in. He turned to look at me, slowly, with this blank expression that turned into a smirk, like he was amused that I'd interrupted him. He had these sharp, sunken eyes, the kind that don't quite match the rest of the face, and the grin on his lips didn't fade as he looked me up and down. For a second, I thought he might just laugh it off and leave, but instead he picked up a snow shovel that was lying nearby and started walking toward me. Why don't you mind your own business? He said, his voice low and rough, almost a whisper, but sharp enough to cut through the air. He gave a weird laugh, like a cackle that echoed a little too long in the cold. I stepped back instinctively, feeling my stomach twist. This guy wasn't just some eccentric local getting into the holiday spirit. He was clearly off. I put my hands up, trying to stay calm. Look, I don't want any trouble, I said, glancing around to see if anyone else was noticing what was happening. The kids had backed up a little, looking scared but still watching. I felt responsible for them somehow, like I had to keep this guy from doing anything even weirder. But then, without warning, he raised the shovel over his head and lunged at me, laughing like some kind of maniac. I barely had time to react, stumbling backward as he swung the shovel down. I dodged, the blade of the shovel slicing through the air just inches from my face. My heart was pounding so hard I could feel it in my throat, and I shouted for help, hoping someone would hear me. People started poking their heads out from their doors, and a couple of neighbors were already rushing over when they saw the man advancing on me again. He kept laughing this guttural, wild sound that was half crazed and half gleeful, like he was getting some twisted thrill out of it. His grip tightened on the handle, and I could see his knuckles turning white, his grin growing wider. One of the neighbors, a big guy in his forties, ran up and shouted, Hey, back off! He didn't wait for a response. He just barreled toward the man, forcing him to stumble back a few steps. Others were gathering around now, 
and I think the crowd made him nervous because his grin started to fade. He looked around, realizing he was outnumbered, and muttered something under his breath before dropping the shovel and backing away. Without another word, he turned and started walking down the street, glancing back over his shoulder with that same eerie smile. I remember feeling this intense urge to keep my distance, even as he faded into the distance. Everyone stood there for a moment, exchanging looks, and a couple of the parents herded their kids inside. When the guy was finally gone, I let out a breath I didn't realize I'd been holding. A couple of neighbors asked if I was okay, and I nodded, but my mind was still spinning, trying to process what just happened. I looked over at the snowman he'd left behind, and there it was, this grotesque thing with that bloody smile, staring back at us from the yard. The red had started to freeze over, turning darker, almost black against the white snow. It was honestly one of the creepiest things I'd ever seen. The police showed up not long after, called by someone down the street who'd seen the whole thing from their window. I gave them a description of the guy, told them everything that happened. After they left, I tried to shake it off, but all I could see was that snowman grinning back at me with that twisted, blood-red smile. I've been back to my sister's a couple of times since, but I never saw the man again. No one ever mentioned him either, almost like he was a bad dream or something. But to this day, every Christmas, that image creeps back into my mind. I'm Hannah. I was on a short trip to visit a friend in a city I hadn't been to before. It was early afternoon, around 1.30 p.m., when I stopped by this big, slightly run-down shopping complex. I wasn't super familiar with the area, so I decided to grab a coffee and wander around a bit. I had about an hour before I was meeting my friend, so I figured I'd just kill some time. It was warm, maybe a bit muggy, and the air inside the building had this stale, musty smell like it hadn't been aired out in a while. The lights overhead were kind of dim, with some flickering every now and then, which added to the slightly off-putting vibe. I remember thinking it was kind of strange for a shopping center, like it had seen better days. The hallways were narrow and echoey, with a mix of random stores, everything from old souvenir shops to a couple of sketchy-looking cell phone repair booths. It was pretty empty, except for a few people wandering around, mostly older folks, and a mom with her kid here and there. At some point, I felt the need to use the restroom, and I noticed a small sign pointing toward a hallway down to the left. I headed that way, and well, this hallway was definitely on the creepier side. It was barely lit, and it felt colder than the rest of the building, like maybe the air conditioning was blasting there for no reason. There were two doors, one for women, one for men, and not much else around. I didn't think much of it, honestly. It was just an older building, so it made sense for it to be a little eerie. As I was about to walk into the women's restroom, I noticed a guy standing at the far end of the hallway. I didn't get a good look at him at first, just saw that he was kind of tall, maybe mid-thirties, wearing a gray hoodie with the hood pulled up and jeans that were a bit too baggy. He was facing away from me, kind of staring at the wall, which was weird, but hey, I wasn't about to judge anyone. Anyway, I went inside the restroom, which had that same musty smell, mixed with the sharp scent of some cleaner they'd probably overused to cover up whatever else was lingering in the air. There were three stalls, and the lights were these old, buzzing fluorescents that flickered every few seconds. I remember thinking to myself that I'd make it quick. I was in the stall when I heard the restroom door open and footsteps come in. They were slow, like whoever it was wasn't in any hurry, just sort of taking their time. I figured it was just someone else coming in, but then I noticed something strange. The footsteps stopped right in front of my stall, like directly outside my door. I held my breath, trying not to make a sound, just feeling a bit of unease start to creep in. After a few seconds, I looked down, and sure enough, I could see a pair of heavy, worn-out shoes, maybe work boots, standing right there. They looked dirty, like whoever was wearing them had been walking through mud recently. My heart started pounding, and all kinds of scenarios went through my mind. I thought maybe it was just a mistake, that they'd realize it was occupied and move on but they didn't move. After what felt like forever, I finally cleared my throat 
hoping that would be enough to make them leave. But instead, they started moving, slowly, but not away from the door. I could hear a faint, almost wheezy breathing sound, and it was coming from the other side of the stall. Then I heard a faint scraping sound, like they were dragging their fingers along the metal door. I was practically holding my breath, trying not to make a sound, hoping whoever it was would just give up and go away. But suddenly, the breathing stopped and I heard them walk away from the door. For a split second, I felt relieved, but that feeling vanished when I heard a sound from the side wall, just above the stalls, a small window. I looked up and saw a shadow through the glass. The guy's face was practically pressed up against it, trying to get a view inside the stall from above. I'll admit, I panicked. I tried to stay quiet, but my hands were shaking and I felt trapped. The restroom was small, with no exit but the main door, which he could easily block if I tried to run for it. The only option I could think of was to scream, but I wasn't even sure if anyone would hear me down that deserted hallway. Then, just as I was working up the nerve to shout, I heard voices outside in the hallway. Two women chatting, probably passing by on their way to one of the stores. I guess the guy heard them too, because he backed away from the window. I took my chance and screamed as loud as I could, hoping someone would notice. The voices stopped, and then I heard the restroom door open and a woman calling out, asking if I was okay. I quickly opened the stall door and rushed out practically stumbling over myself. The guy was gone, and as soon as I stepped out, I saw two women standing there, looking concerned. I told them everything, still in a bit of a daze, my heart pounding, barely able to get the words out. One of the women immediately went to find security, while the other stayed with me, trying to keep me calm. A few minutes later, security showed up with one of the mall employees, and I gave them a description of the guy. The whole thing was such a blur, but I managed to remember his hoodie, his dirty boots, and that blank look on his face. They assured me they'd look for him and asked me to stick around in case they needed more details. I was sitting on a bench in the hallway with the two women who'd helped me when security came back, saying they'd found him. Apparently, he was lurking near another restroom on the other side of the complex. They brought him out in handcuffs, and seeing him again was unsettling. His expression was just blank, like he was totally unfazed by everything going on. He didn't even look at me as they walked him past us. I get this horrible feeling, like something about him wasn't right. This was different. It felt like he was watching me, almost like he'd been waiting. I wonder what would have happened if those two women hadn't walked by, or if I hadn't noticed him trying to peek through that window. It feels like something out of a nightmare that wasn't supposed to happen. My name is Elaine. I was staying alone in my small apartment. It was one of those old brick buildings, ivy creeping up the sides and wooden floors that creaked if you so much as thought about walking across them. I'd moved there a few months prior, wanting a place to myself after a long-term relationship ended, and I liked it. It was cozy, had that vintage charm, you know, and most nights I'd feel fine just being there alone. It was a Tuesday, around 10. I remember because I was winding down, sitting on my couch with a cup of tea and one of those silly reality TV shows in the background. Outside, it was chilly. There'd been a light rain earlier, and the streets were still glistening under the streetlights. The only sound was the occasional drip of water hitting the balcony rail from the gutter above. For some reason, it felt extra quiet that night. My apartment's on the second floor and my living room has this big, single-pane window facing the street. Since the building is old, the windows have those thick wooden frames and take forever to open or close, which usually makes me feel safe. I remember glancing over at it a few times because the glass reflected the lights from outside, and sometimes it would catch my eye in a weird way. I shrugged it off, assuming I was just tired. But then, out of nowhere, I got this uneasy feeling, like someone was watching me. I tried to ignore it, focusing back on my tea and my show, but something felt wrong. My living room light was on, and the window was like this huge, dark mirror reflecting the room back at me, making it impossible to see outside. And that's when I noticed it. 
Just a faint outline at first, like someone standing still, close to the glass. I stared at the reflection for a second, trying to figure out if my eyes were playing tricks on me. But then I felt that slow, sinking realization that I wasn't imagining it. There was definitely someone there, just standing outside, barely visible in the shadows. The figure was tall, maybe six feet, wearing what looked like a long coat. I remember seeing this hint of dark fabric, and his face, or rather his eyes, were fixed on me, watching through the glass. I couldn't even breathe, and my mind went blank. I didn't want to move, because if I moved, he'd know I'd seen him. My heart was racing, and I felt this intense need to scream, but I was too paralyzed with fear. I managed to get up, inching over to the side of the room, hoping maybe he'd go away if he couldn't see me. But just as I was halfway across the room, I saw his hand move. It wasn't like a wave exactly, but he lifted his hand slowly, pressing it against the glass with his fingers splayed out, and he just kept it there, like he was feeling the glass, maybe testing if he could push it open or something. Then he tilted his head, looking at me directly, and motioned for me to come closer. He was signaling with his other hand, gesturing like he wanted me to open the window. That's when I lost it. I screamed. I yelled as loud as I could, hoping someone would hear me, and instead of running off, he just smiled. It wasn't a big, toothy grin, but a slow, creeping smirk that made my skin crawl. He didn't look friendly. He looked twisted, almost like he enjoyed how scared I was. I don't know if it was the dim light from the street lamps or what, but his face looked distorted, like his features were stretched in ways they shouldn't be. His eyes were wide, a little too wide, and there was this strange glint in them that seemed both empty and focused all at once. I stumbled backward, knocking over my tea and screamed again louder this time. That's when I heard footsteps in the hallway outside my apartment. My neighbor, Gabe, an older guy who lived upstairs, banged on my door and called out asking if I was okay. I kept screaming, pointing at the window, but by the time Gabe unlocked the door and rushed in, the man was gone. Gabe checked outside, looked up and down the street, but there was no sign of him. The sidewalk was completely empty. It was like he'd just vanished. I was so shaken up and I kept insisting that there had been someone there. Gabe looked around, then went down the street, peering into every shadow, but he didn't find anything. We called the cops, and when they arrived, they took my statement, though I could tell they were skeptical. They searched around, but it was as if no one had been there at all. One of the officers tried to reassure me, saying it could have been a prank, maybe a kid from the neighborhood playing around, but I knew what I saw. I told them exactly how he looked, that eerie stare, the way he'd pressed his hand against the glass. I was too scared to sleep. I kept all the lights on and sat on my couch, just staring at that window, that awful smile, and the way he'd motioned for me to come closer, like he had all the time in the world. He never came back. I still don't know who he was or what he wanted. It sounded like a bad dream. Part of me still wonders if it even happened or if my mind played some kind of horrible trick on me. But I know what I saw and I know how it made me feel. Even now, I can still picture his face pressed right up against the glass as clear as if it happened yesterday.